children. I am Jacob. Today we shall be talking about love. Love is showing others how much they matter to you. And you all matter to me so much that I have decided to share with you this immortal classic of literature. <sighs> it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. Oh. <laughs> You got me. I'm actually not reading an immortal classic, but I'm still reading a pretty epic piece of literature. This one's my favorite, Zero Gravity Man. I'm a huge fan. Here, look, see? Zero Gravity Man fights for truth, justice throughout the galaxy. Zero Gravity Man flies. He battles. He eats healthy. A new issue comes out every month. And if you'll excuse me, I'm almost done with this month's issue. Oh, wow. Let's go, Zero Gravity Man. Uh-oh. <gasps> Wait a second. Hold on. That can't be right. That can't be right. This isn't, this isn't right. This is a, <laughs> this must be some kind of mistake. Zero Gravity Man was just almost smushed by a giant meteor that was just hurling through the galaxy, and then it, 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 it just ends. It just ends. I mean, that just, <laughs> I, 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 it can't be right. <laughs> Zero gravity, man. It can't be right. Wait a second. It says to be continued. Oh, it's a cliffhanger issue. That means I have to wait an entire month to see if the Zero Gravity Man ever makes it out of this predicament. I hate waiting. I want to see, I want to see Zero Gravity Man kick. I want to see Zero Gravity Man float. I want to see Zero Gravity Man spin. Oops. So today's story is kind of a cliffhanger. Two people mess up really bad and the world is in quite a predicament. But don't you worry. You won't have to wait too long to find out what happens. Oh, it still works. I'm a hero! Yeah. 
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Out of the deep, deep love, God created the whole universe and filled it with life. From great lumbering hippos to jewel-winged hummingbirds and sleepy sloths, the earth was filled with sound and color. But in all the world, there was nothing quite like God. Nothing that could think and feel and love like God. Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds and the creatures. Out of the dust of the earth, God formed a man and a woman, the very first people created in God's very own image. God placed them in a beautiful garden along a river. How about a swim? And coconuts for an afternoon snack. God gave Adam and Eve the entire world to care for and explore and enjoy. They had only a single rule. You may eat fruit from any tree in the garden but you must not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will certainly die. <laughs> oh, definitely not touching that tree. Life in the Garden of Eden was perfect, crossing the spring from the earth as soon as seeds were planted. Every animal was friendly and ready to play or offer a ride. Adam and Eve never argued over how to spend their time. Your turn to choose. Best of all, Adam and Eve got to walk and talk with God. In the cool of the evening, they would walk alongside God under the shade of the leafy fig trees. You made the most amazing sunrise this morning. Yeah, we can't wait to see what this sunset is gonna look like. But into all this beauty slithered a false note. One afternoon, as Adam and Eve searched for wild mushrooms, the serpent uncoiled himself and slid along a low branch beside Eve. Looking for a snack, are you? Oh, hello. How about some luscious fruit? Eve glanced toward a grove where beautiful fruit trees stood. The tree in the center stood taller. Its fruit seemed to glow. Did God really say you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? We can eat fruit from the trees, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. Do not even touch it. If you do, you will die. And, well, die does not sound like a very good thing. In spite of herself, Eve took a few steps closer to the grove. The serpent slithered along. <laughs> you will certainly not die. God knows that when you eat fruit from that tree, you will know things you have never known before. Like God, you will be able to tell the difference between good and evil. Eve looked at the shining piece of fruit on the central tree. It hung right and heavy. God loves us. Surely he wants good things for us, like knowing more? Eve reached out her hand with one finger. She touched it. Nothing happened. Maybe it's a test. God actually wants us to try the fruit, but he wants us to know without telling us. Sure, that's it, sweetie. God had given the rule to protect Adam and Eve, knowing all of the terrible things that would happen if Adam and Eve chose to disobey. God was trying to keep them from pain. But Eve started to question in her heart. One little taste can't hurt. Eve gave the rich fruit a gentle tug. It came away in her hand. She took a bite of the juicy flesh. Oh. Eve called out to Adam, who was a short distance away. You've got to try this. But isn't that from the... The fruit looks so amazing. 
Adam decided he didn't care. Let me have some. Adam, too, took a bite. A strange expression crossed his face. I never thought about that before. New ideas and thoughts crept into the minds of Adam and Eve. None of it made them feel better. Uh, 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 we're not wearing clothes. I need to cover up. The first time, Adam and Eve were filled with shame. Quickly, they stitched together fig leaves to wear. As evening shadows lengthened, they heard God walking through the garden. Oh no. Quick, hide. In trying to make their own happiness apart from God, Adam and Eve had broken their relationship with God. Sin had entered the world. Where are you? Adam cowered behind a berry bush. I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten the fruit from the tree I commanded you not to eat? Uh, it's it's the fault of the woman you put here with me. She she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I, I ate it. God gave Eve a turn to speak, too. What have you done? The, the serpent tricked me. That's why I ate the fruit. God's own heart was pierced through by what people had done. God told the serpent, I am putting a curse on you. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. Because Adam and Eve had turned away from God, they could no longer find a home in the Garden of Eden. From now on, growing food would be difficult, back-breaking work. Giving birth to children would be painful, and family relationships would be complicated and hard sometimes. And one day, Adam and Eve would die. You were made out of the ground. You will return to it when you die. I... I'm cold. Though people had broken their relationship with their creator, God's deep, deep love for them had not changed. God even made clothes from animal skins for Adam and Eve to wear on their journey from the garden. And already, God had a plan. One day, God would become a person. Jesus. God's very own son would walk on earth among people, showing them how to live in relationship with God again. And Jesus would one day lay down his life to break the power of death once and for all. Because in the end, God's love always wins. In the beginning, God made a beautiful world. Then God put Adam and Eve in charge. But Adam and Eve broke God's rule, and they broke their relationship with God. Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and sin came into the world. What a cliffhanger! Adam and Eve messed up. But the truth is, everyone messes up sometimes. I mean, we're not superheroes. Sometimes we're mean to people in our family. Sometimes we break the rules, or we lose control. Whoa. Sometimes we do or say things we know aren't true. The worst of... Oh. <laughs> you got me. We all sin, but here's the important part. Even when we mess up, God still loves us. We don't have to wait to find out. We know God loves us because God sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins. There is nothing that can separate you from God's love. Not your mess ups. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not your sins. Ooh, 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 ooh. And not even a meteor from another galaxy. Ugh. That's the one thing to remember today. God loves us no matter what. It feels good to be loved. Now. Ah, uh, uh, so. If you'll excuse me, I shall reread this immortal classic. Hmm.